Hello and good morning to everyone in our global communications community. Welcome to join the very first event of the Ethics Month. The Ethics Month is the month of February starting here and now. My name is Kia Haring. I have a role as a Director of Ethics and Standards at Global Alliance for PR and Communication Management. And the Ethics Month is an activity organized by Global Alliance. I will be your moderator during this webinar today. About the Ethics and Ethics Month and Ethics in Communications, why does it matter? The latest research states that the main strategic issue for communications for the next years is to build and maintain trust across key stakeholders. The economic turbulence related to the global pandemic has put trust to the test and is actually strengthening this trend. So the momentum to put emphasis on ethics in communications and PR is here right now. Building and maintaining trust require not only responsibility in actions, but also openness and transparency in all interactions and communications driven by moral and values with hon honesty, fairness and integrity as a foundation. The Global Alliance Ethics Month in February 2022 brings attention to the importance of ethics in communications in all areas of business, government, non-profit and education. It connects the PR and communications professionals globally to discuss the current state of ethics and the ethical dilemmas we as professionals face in our daily work. So welcome to join the Trust in Media webinar with us today. A big thank you to our local communication association PROCOM who has made this webinar happen. I hope you have filled in the brief survey that was sent to you together with the registering. If not, you still have time to do that. We will take a sneak peek to the results uh, during this session. Uh, in social media, please use the hashtags Ethics Matter or Ethics Month so that we can all follow the discussion even afterwards. You can use the chat function on this team chat to, for sending in your questions and we have plenty of time for those at the end of this session. So without further ado, I am happy to pre present you our speakers of today. And here they are. So welcome Chiara Valentini, Professor of Corporate Communication at Jyväskylä University School of Business and Economics from Finland. And Mark Badham here with me in the studio, a senior lecturer from the same university. As Chiara and Mark will be opening up their research on trust in media, we will have also Eero Hyvönen joining us uh, the Chair of the Council for Mass Media in Finland to give a commentary after the research uh, results has been disclosed. But now, without further ado, over to you, Mark. Thank you, Kia. So our topic is uh, trust in media during the COVID pandemic. A very interesting topic, I hope that you agree. And we're going to focus on the implications of that for us communication professionals. So welcome. Uh, let me start by saying that um, uh, COVID has challenged many of us to think about trust in the news media. I think uh, we'll agree with that. For instance, we want everyone to follow COVID guidelines so that we can all contain the spread and uh, stay safe. But many do not trust the media, we think, uh, to, as the key channel of information uh, from governments and health authorities and so on. So this raises questions, doesn't it? So if this key information channel is distrusted, then uh, where do we turn for reliable authority, accurate COVID guidelines? So first uh, in our talk, uh, we will begin with a look at levels of public trust globally. Then uh, we'll have a quick look at why does all this matter? Why is media trust important for us communication professionals and for society? And then we'll begin to present key findings 
from our COVID communication research project and Chiara will talk to you about that. And then later we'll move on with Kia to a discussion of uh, how does this impact us communication professionals and so on. So let's begin with uh, what is trust? Trust is, uh, it's always good to start with a definition, right? It's your willingness to be vulnerable to the actions of another person or entity or institution. For instance, the media. And it's based on the expectation that that person or entity or institution will perform a particular action that's important to you, despite your inability to control that action. We've adapted that definition from Mayer and colleagues 1995. So trust in media, the global comparisons. Um, we base this largely on the Reuters Institute digital news report, the most recent one. 2021. And we see that trust in media, and this may surprise many of us, trust in media actually grew during the, this pandemic by 6% globally on average. This actually reverses the recent decline in trust. Average was 44% trust globally. But we found that it was highest in Finland. Go Finland! 65% uh, and lowest in the USA, which may not be that surprising, 29%. Let's start looking at some of the regions and countries where you might be having joined us. So Finland is at the top with 65%. Uh, we're representing uh, the, the Nordic perspective, and so we're focused on Denmark and Norway and Sweden and so on. And you can see they're, they're, they're still pretty high. Uh, UK is at 36% in that Northern Europe region, so quite low. Then we look at Western Europe and Southern Europe, France particularly low, and Greece particular, particularly low. Some of you may be surprised, I don't know, but Portugal, 61%, almost as high as Finland. Then we go to Eastern Europe, Poland the highest at 48, Hungary the lowest. North America, there we see USA again compared to Canada at 45, a big difference there. And uh, the next Asia Pacific section there, I'm from Australia and it's kind of in the middle there, it's the average around 43, 44%. So the Reuters Institute looked at media trust in three different measures or variables. They looked at uh, perceptions of media fairness and they tried to gauge public opinion about fairness of the media. And they found that uh, the media is seen to be fairly representing, uh, uh, for instance, younger people particularly uh, felt that they aren't fairly represented in the media, uh, which is unfortunate. But also, and this is probably not surprising, that those on the right of the political spectrum uh, tend to feel that the media aren't, the mainstream news media aren't uh, representing them fairly. The second measure that the Reuters Institute looked at was this perception of impartiality, so impartial and objective news. And they found that three quarters uh, of the population globally prefer news that reflects a range of views and lets them decide what to think. Not, and there's not much variation across the countries. They're all pretty uniform with that three quarters. And then 66%, a little bit lower, uh, think that media should try to be neutral on every issue. And then the minority found that uh, they felt that it makes no sense to try to be neutral on some issues. Uh, so that was a minority. Then the third measure they looked at was uh, con concerns of misinformation. They looked at a number of different measures, but I'm just focusing on these three. So concerns of misinformation, the average was close to 60% globally, and that was, that's been the same roughly for the last few years. But the highest concern was in Africa, and the lowest in Europe. So that might be interesting to some of you. So now why does all this matter? Um, why does media trust matter, whether it's going up or down, whether we perceive it highly or not? So the news media is at the center of what we call the supply chain of information about, for instance, COVID guidelines. Um, 
for instance, let's look at governments. And you, a lot of you, some of you may be communication professionals working in governments. Um, for you, uh, you, turn, you turn to the media as a reliable channel, and we need to have media as a reliable channel of our information, particularly during a crisis like this pandemic. For citizens and businesses, uh, we rely on media as a source of accurate and reliable information. Citizens might say, well, if we can't trust the media during a crisis for accurate information and truthful information, who can we trust? And that's a serious matter. But then for all audiences, during a crisis, a pretty big crisis, and especially a global one, we rely on the media as a sense maker uh, of complex uh, information uh, that's that's being supplied to us and uh, it's during a crisis that we tend to want someone out there to make sense and the news media traditionally has been that sense maker so this is why you know trust in media is important so for organizations businesses uh, they rely on the media as a third-party validator. So this is another reason why media trust is important because um, audiences tend to uh, rely on a third party to give an objective view of corporate messages. So if they read or listen to or view messages from a corporation, they tend to trust it more if it's coming from a third-party validator and particularly the news media. So during a crisis, uh, citizens are more reliant on the media. Um, uh, and, and that's just something that we need to talk about, hopefully, in this, in this session, in the webinar. Um, so media trust is important for citizens to remain calm, to remain knowledgeable and uh, compliant, really, um, in crisis events. So, Chiara, over to you to talk about our project. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning from you, Vascula. Um, we're now moving to uh, some uh, real data, some, some findings from our project. Um, our project is still going on and it studies uh, essentially how different uh, <clears throat> social actors, organization, institutions are communicating about the COVID-19 and particularly, we are also looking at the news media roles uh, during this pandemic uh, and how they are being treated, uh, the uh, different uh, voices or, or uh, social actors or <clears throat> communications uh, in, in their news coverage. Um, this is an international project which I'm leading and I'm working with Mark from my university, but also with uh, colleagues from the US. Uh, Italy and South Korea. And it's a project sponsored by Helsinki Sanomat Foundation, which, which is a Finnish uh, non-profit independent uh, foundation <coughs> um, uh, granting funding for research projects like the one we are doing. So we are very thankful <clears throat> thankful to Helsinki Sanomat Foundation. Um, now, uh, moving to the, um, to the uh, project data, uh, uh, <clears throat> um, just a second. Yes, right. The slides. Next. Um, we were particularly interested in uh, looking at um, whether the news media coverage has impacted uh, or influenced in the public attitude and the behaviors of citizens. In particular, if they influence their coping mechanism. With coping mechanism, we, we mean uh, their <clears throat> uh, compliance to recommendations like uh, wearing masks, uh, social distance, keeping social distance. Uh, um, today, now it's a time about uh, vaccinations. So, so all this kind of uh, recommendation that uh, health authority has sent to the citizen. And how are they coping also emotionally uh, on the pandemic? Uh, we studied this in six different countries. Um, so beside Finland, we also uh, study Sweden, Australia, US, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, um, South Korea and uh, Sweden. Uh, we collect data in uh, fall 2020, at the very end of 2020, and we are now collecting new data. Today, <clears throat> um, 
to um, a representative sample of the population in this country. So now I would like to <clears throat> present you some of the results which we find particularly interesting when it comes to uh, uh, um, the, um, the news media trust in the, in the uh, 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 pandemic. Um, we uh, look at uh, three different kind of uh, variables. So, so we look at, at uh, trust in the media in the terms of news credibility. Uh, we look at also at three uh, dependent variables, diversity of content, diversity of uh, source and opinion. Here particularly, we were looking at whether the journalists were giving space to uh, different kind of uh, social actors, organization, institution, not the usual suspect we might expect the WHO, the health authorities or government. And also the, the angles, how they were discussing and presenting um, uh, information, news about COVID-19, so differences in opinion, um, <clears throat> which you might guess in democratic country, we expect that, of course, the, the, the media to offer a fair balance of objective representation of uh, um, the situation. So giving visibility to a diversity of sources, a diversity of content and opinions. And then also we look at how uh, the um, population uh, um, perceived the quality of information and whether this has uh, had an impact on what we call knowledge uncertainty, meaning uh, their uh, level of uh, understanding or feeling to understand the, the situation. When we have high uncertainty about what's going on, we feel insecure, we feel uh, some form of stress, we feel um, maybe even confused and not knowing what to do about it. But if we have low uh, uncertainty, we are much more prepared to um, react or to at least to know what to do in case of crisis, in case of an emergency. So we were interested to Lee, it does it matter if citizens trust the media, if the media uh, offer different kind of content about COVID um, and different opinions, doesn't matter for how citizen feels about their knowledge on the pandemic, on the disease, and, and what does and what can we learn about that? So this is essentially our <clears throat> question we investigate in this part of the project. Now, I want to show you some results which uh, we found particularly interesting. So you can see now on the left side of the chart, uh, news credibility, which is the uh, <clears throat> variables we use to measure media trust. So the highest news uh, credibility is the more trust the citizens show on, on the uh, traditional news media. And as you can see, the highest uh, trust is given to uh, Australia news media with the 5.18. Um, as average score, and the lowest Italy with 4.45. The scale is from 1 to 7, uh, with 7 the highest level and 1 the lowest level. So they are all above the, the middle point, but uh, with some differences. Um, on the right side, you look at the data related to source diversity. This variable actually uh, indicates whether the citizen perceive that their um, mainstream um, news media uh, offer visibility in the news coverage uh, to different actors, to different organizations, institutions. So it was a variety of, of uh, source of information. And here again, very interesting, you find uh, Italy, despite the news credibility very low, that has um, uh, as highest as Australian, uh, the level of uh, news diversity perceived by the citizen, of course. Um, when we look at the opinion diversity and content diversity, we also find the interesting result here. We have uh, uh, again uh, Italy standing above the other countries in, co in terms of opinion diversity. So here we, when opinion diversity, we mean different um, perspective, different uh, views on uh, COVID uh, uh, information on the specific topic there. Um, so. Um, uh, it's not a surprise that there are different sources. They, uh, each source might have a very different kind of uh, uh, views on the on the on the topic. Uh, but uh, we found it that uh, uh, despite this high level of opinion diversity in Italy, 
uh, uh, we have, uh, um, uh, and also, for example, in Finland, the content diversity uh, in Finland is much lower uh, uh, than other countries. What does it mean? It means that uh, um, during the time we were uh, looking at this, uh, uh, serving this data, so I should mention that this is related to uh, the first year of the pandemic, uh, um, people, uh, Finnish citizens perceived that the news media um, was not uh, covering much diverse content, much diverse topic re related to COVID, but much uh, focused on the same kind of key message uh, <clears throat> without uh, giving more visibility or other issues. Um, what does this uh, um, mean in terms of uh, how the citizen uh, um, uh, perceived uh, the, um, their uh, knowledge, the overall knowledge of the pandemic? Well, <clears throat> we've seen that uh, um, countries which give higher visibility to different sources, who uh, cover different opinions, uh, um, uh, in those countries, citizens shows an overall um, higher level of uh, knowledge uncertainty, like Italy, as you can see, standing above the other countries. So the Italians show to be a little bit more insecure about uh, uh, what to do and how to cope about the pandemic. Uh, and uh, uh, then, for instance, country where the diversity was lower. And I think this is a quite interesting result as such, because uh, uh, it's not what we normally would expect it. We wouldn't normally expect it that diversity brings fairness, uh, good representation, and would uh, increase the knowledge uh, uh, among uh, <clears throat> the audiences. But in a crisis situation, in a risk emergency situation, where also the level of knowledge uh, on the pandemic uh, is in evolution. And we have to remember that a year ago, we knew much less than we know today about COVID-19 and how it spread and the different <coughs> variants and so forth. So um, in these kind of uh, circumstances, uh, um, spreading or, or sharing different kind of views might actually be counterproductive. Uh, 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 for um, helping citizens to cope with the pandemic. So now, <clears throat> now I would like to move into some kind of key learning based on this data. And of course, we have much more data to show, but uh, I think it will be nice then to discuss uh, some of these key findings in relation to media trust with you. Uh, <clears throat> for us, it's important to, um, to underline a few points, which you see also in the slides. Um, of course, uh, a certain level of um, distrust or let's say critical view towards uh, the media and what is presented there is important. Um, and of course, uh, we know that uh, diversity as idea, diversity of content, diversity of opinions, diversity of, of sources uh, uh, <clears throat> covered in new story is an important democratic principle, is important also to uh, <clears throat> for us as uh, readers, as a viewers of uh, uh, news media content, it's important uh, to have this diversity to uh, evaluate the judge and also um, gain confidence on 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 uh, on uh, on what we 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 um, we hear about the pandemic, but we have seen from our research that uh, um, in certain circumstances, like we are facing this global pandemic, uh, in countries where media trust is high, so we, we we talk about all in those countries where media trust is generally very high. It is totally fine and could be even very effective strategy if media become a validator, uh, um, an amplifier of government recommendation, and if media as a gatekeeper also focus uh, on certain sources and give less, uh, um, let's say, less uh, uh, visibility to alternative sources, which might actually uh, endanger uh, the understanding of the situation uh, from a public perspective. Um, so we are not saying that the uh, media should actually serve the, 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 the other source of information itself, but what we're trying to say is that in a specific condition, the media role can be something more than uh, the traditional role we expected and can take a stand on deciding which kind of content uh, should be covered how often and which sources are uh, the credible one, the one who help release uh, 
the right information uh, for public for for maintaining public health. Um, with this one, I would like to close and uh, get back uh, uh, to the studio uh, for uh, the next speaker uh, presentation. Thank you.